You are listening to the voice of T.K. Coleman, and this is another episode of T.K.'s Two Cents. Today, we're going to talk about loving your neighbor and making good decisions. Let's dive right in with tweet number one. It's love your neighbor as yourself. It's not love your neighbor instead of yourself. Some of the most compassionate, charitable, empathetic, generous human beings I have ever met can be some of the most cruel, unloving, selfish, hoarding people when it comes to how they treat themselves. My friends, I am not saying this for the purpose of condemnation, but I am saying this for the purpose of encouragement and self-empowerment, that if you are in the business of treating other people so well, but turning around and treating yourself like trash, please turn it around and redefine your understanding of what it means to love. In all of your efforts to be good to other people, to be generous and compassionate and charitable to other people, please don't forget that you are one of those people that you need to be good to. You've heard this before. What do they tell you when you're on an airplane? That if there's any kind of trouble and you need those oxygen mas oxygen mask, God forbid, you put on yours first and then you take care of the next person. Why? Because your ability to care for other people is an extension of your own self-care. There are many people who say, you know, but I just love other people so much and I want to make sure everyone's taken care of. I never get enough sleep. I never get enough to eat. Uh, you know, I, I'm always stressed out and I'm always tired. But, you know, it's just because I'm such a giving person and I got to make sure the kids are fine. I got to make sure the family's fine. I got to make sure my teammates are fine. And here's the thing. Just because you are giving yourself does not mean that you are giving the very best of yourself. Just because you're putting other people first and working really hard and stressing out to make sure they're okay, it does not mean that you are doing an optimal job of serving them and making their lives better. If you are not bringing your best self to the occasion of giving yourself, then your giving is compromised. If you're stressed, if you're unfed, you haven't had any sleep, you haven't made sure that you have done what you need to do to ground yourself in a consciousness of health and well-being and, and, and confidence with knowing where you are and what you need to do, then yeah, you might be giving yourself to other people, but what are you giving? 2% of yourself? 5% of yourself? Why not put yourself in a position so that when you give to other people, even if you only give a little bit of your time, you are giving with great impact because you are making sure that when you show up, you are showing up strong because you look at self-care not as some form of selfishness that you exercise at the expense of others, but rather as a form of rational self-interest that makes you more useful to the people that you love and that you want to help. Loving other people is not a substitute for loving yourself. It is an extension of loving yourself. When you love yourself well, you begin to love other people well also. Let's go to tweet number two. You'll never make good decisions if you need everyone in your life to think your decisions are good. Here's the question you have to ask yourself. Do you want to be a good decision maker or do you prefer to be seen as a good decision maker? Because those two things will not always agree. Sometimes the right decision is the one that's going to require you to pay a high social cost. Here's the thing about truth. The truth makes demands on us. The truth doesn't just, you know, stimulate our minds. The truth says, I want you to change your lifestyle in order to accommodate me. I want you to reorient how you approach things in order to accommodate me. The truth demands change. It demands accountability. And so what that means is that it's very easy for people to choose something other than the truth in order to have a life of convenient convenience and comfort. And so it's very easy for a large number of people to be on the side of something other than the truth. Why? Because we often prefer the easy answer 
over the right answer because the right answer might require a lot of research. It might require a lot of thinking. It might require that we have confrontations with our cognitive dissonance. It might require that we take a stand for something that causes other people to look at us as weird or look at us as disappointing or look at us as uncool. And it's much easier to say, you know, I don't want to do all that thinking. I'll just go with the easy thing. And there are a lot of people out there who make their living by telling everyone, no, you don't really have to think about anything. Everything will be okay. It'll be fine. It'll go away. Someone else will take care of it. The government will take care of you. Ooh, what a lie that one is. They're not going to take care of you. You better take care of yourself. You better take care of your own family. You better work together with people that have skin in the game. Don't look to anybody that's going to take care of you. And don't seek truth if the voice masquerading as the representative of truth is telling you to believe in a philosophy that you are fundamentally powerless and that someone else is going to take care of you and ensure that your happiness, your well-being, and your fulfillment are guaranteed. Don't believe those voices. Do the hard thing of thinking for yourself, doing your own research, putting in the work, having the uncomfortable conversations, and making the sacrifices that's what it takes to be a good thinker and to be a good decision maker. And it means that you've got to pay the cost of having someone else look at you and go, yeah, that guy seems to have lost his mind. Do you realize that every great innovator, every great creator, everyone that makes an impact on the world, when they first introduce their idea, the comfortable world, satisfied with the status quo, doesn't look at the idea and go, yay, that's awesome. That's just what we needed. They do the opposite. They say, oh, I'm a little concerned. I've got a thousand objections. I've got a thousand questions. I don't know if it's going to work. It scares me a little bit. And you've got to be someone who's willing to face that heat and say, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with using this as a learning experience because I care more about following the truth where it leads than following the crowd where it leads. You know, I've been reading a lot about the lives of saints. I have here on my desk a two-volume set called The Lives of the Saints. And I find it very interesting to study holy people. Um, as someone that grew up in a religious environment, reading the Bible stories, it's so important for someone like me to remember that holy people is not just some concept that applied a few thousand years ago or a couple of thousand years ago. It's not this ancient thing. There are people in every generation that make sacrifices to do the right thing. And one of the things that all of these lives have in common is that they were all willing to stand for something because it was valuable, not because it was popular. And that's the question that we have to ask ourselves. Are we basing our lives? Are we basing our beliefs? Are we basing our decisions on a desire to adhere to principle or on a desire to avoid persecution? How you answer that question will determine the quality of your decision making. Focus on actually being a good person rather than winning the virtue signaling battles of proving to everyone else that you're good. Focus on actually having good ideas rather than on being someone who learns how to repeat the same old tired talking points in order to convince some crowd or some tribe that your ideas are good. Focus on being someone that actually makes good decisions rather than being someone who does only those things that other people will approve of. You'll be a lot healthier in the long run. You'll be able to sleep at night. You'll be able to look yourself in the mirror. And you want to be able to do that. You want to be able to look yourself in the mirror. That's all, folks. That's how you love your neighbor. That's how you make good decisions. Thanks for tuning in to TK's Two Cents. If you are listening on the podcast, please leave a comment. Please rate. Give me those stars, baby. <laughs> if you're watching on YouTube, please hit the like button. Please hit the subscribe button. Please leave a comment on something you'd like to hear me talk about or some additional comments that you have. And do not hesitate to share this episode with a family member or friend that you think might be inspired or edified by these brief rants. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. I appreciate you. Have a great week. Keep creating freedom in every way that you can.